Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Gwell and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We both are from civil engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part is environmental chemistry that will be taught by me and the second part is environmental microbiology that will be covered by Professor Shudha Gwell. This is my sixth module and 29th lecture and in my previous modules uh, I have covered acids, bases and salts in the first module. Then in the second module I covered the chemical equilibrium. In the third module I discussed about the chemical kinetics. Then fourth module I discussed about the catalyst and catalytic reactions. In the fifth module I have explained the chlorine chemistry and the nitrogen chemistry and this is the sixth module where I am covering the radioactivity or nuclear reactions. In my previous lectures, I have uh, told you about the fundamentals of radioactivity and the stability of the, um, of the uh, radio uh, nuclei, uh, why it is unstable uh, the neutron proton ratio. In this uh, lecture, I will cover the following topics. The, uh, the lecture content is like that radiocarbon dating, uh, then uses of radiation, uses of isotopes and measurement of uh, radioactivity. Now, radiocarbon dating. Uh, in my previous lecture, I told you that how the age of a rock or and ore can be determined uh, by using the um, uranium lead ratio or uranium helium ratio. The, here I will uh, tell you also similar thing, but uh, not exactly similar, but um, very interesting thing I will discuss um, and you will see uh, how, uh, the, um, how uh, the carbon 14 can be used. Um, for this purpose. Okay. Now, the method uh, was, was developed by Libby, Libby uh, 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 1945 onwards. They have taken a long time to establish this thing. So, that is why this uh, dash is written and Nobel prize uh, was given in 1960 to Libby and uh, Libby. Uh, this is used for the to know the age of organic material. In the previous one, it is the age of ore, um, but here it is the organic uh, material. What is the organic material? Say, for example, it can be wood, uh, it can be hair, it can be skin, it can be some tissues. Okay, so um, you can know uh, how old are they. Say, for example, some wood. It is uh, produced long time back. Say, for example and it is kept say for example, for 30 years, 40 years, even more years. So, um, when it is produced that um, you can determine. Now, the method is based on the accurate determination of the ratio of C 14 is to C 12. I already told you that carbon has 3 isotopes. I already told that carbon uh, 12, this is the natural, uh, natural one. Uh, most common, most abundant carbon 14, a uh, carbon 12, 
this this is the mass uh, ma atomic mass uh, number and uh, of, of course, the atomic number is 6 and this is the 14 carbon 14 C 14 this atomic mass uh, is 14 and there is another that is 13 C. But 13 C the question is given here is 13 C a radio isotope you already know what is the meaning of radio isotope. So, here it is uh, given that 13 C is radio isotope or not. No, 13 C is not uh, radio isotope it is also occurring uh, naturally and uh, with at a very low percentage 1.3 percent um, uh, only and uh, it is, but it is not radio isotope it is not radioactive, but carbon 14 is radioactive ok carbon 14 is radioactive. So, this ratio is to be determined then we can know uh, the Mm, uh, how old uh, this uh, what is the age of this uh, uh, organic materials. Okay. Now, uh, I will explain uh, step by step it is uh, little bit complicated, but uh, um, very interesting. Okay. Uh, what you see here in the outer atmosphere in the outer atmosphere cosmic rays uh, uh, are there uh, we all know that cosmic rays are there. So, they produce neutrons with very high energy. Okay. So, in the outer atmosphere uh, cosmic rays produce neutrons uh, with very high energy by collision with air. Okay. So, now these neutrons you know they can react with uh, nitrogen uh, 14, nitrogen 14 is um, um, the um, common one na? nitrogen 14. So, nitrogen 14, 14 and 7 of course, for nitrogen. So, it reacts this neutrons that is generated that that reacts with nitrogen this is naturally occurring everything is no, not done in some experiment okay, in the lab it is naturally occurring. So, neutron uh, uh, they react with the nitrogen to produce 14 C, 14 C okay, and proton. Okay. according to the equation 1. So, this is the equation. Now, this 14 C is radioactive I told you that 14 C is radioactive here neutron proton ratio is not although it is light element, but uh, here the neutron proton ratio is not 1 ok 14 is to um, 14 means here neutron is um, 14 minus 6. Um, so, 8 ok 8 is to 6 ok neutron proton ratio. Now, here this is radioactive ok. So, this C 14 uh, shows beta activity what does it mean that means, it um, radiates uh, the uh, electron beta beta activity means electron as shown in equation 2 ok and it has T half 5 7 this is approximately 5 7 6 0 years this is the half life ok half life of this carbon 14 ok. So, now what you have seen initially the neutron is produced by the cosmic rays in the air in the outer atmosphere then this neutron um, reacts with the nitrogen to form carbon 14 ok carbon 14 which is radioactive and this carbon 14 produces nitrogen 14 plus beta ok. So, this is um, happening ok. You can see here that with beta emission you see 6 to 7 it has increased it has gone to one position right in the periodic table ok that I explained there in previous lectures ok. And here you can see 14 plus 1 so here also 14 plus 1 7 0 so 6 1 so it is matching ok. Now, this 14 carbon ultimately produces carbon 14 dioxide. So, carbon 14 is produced, but it reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, but that carbon dioxide is C 14 carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and steady state concentration reached to about C 14 is to C 12 10 to the power minus 12 is to 1 this is the uh, ratio concentration ratio ok C 14 is to C 12 this is the ratio 10 to the minus 12 is to 1 so small amount ok. Then this carbon 14 dioxide is taken in and given out by plants because it is mixed condition carbon 14 
carbon dioxide and uh, carbon 12 carbon dioxide it is mixed okay. and uh, so uh, plant cannot distinguish plant is taking the mixture. Okay. So, it is both taking out this uh, C 14 carbon dioxide and C 12 carbon dioxide and giving out also C 14 carbon dioxide uh, and C 12 carbon dioxide. Now, the plant eating animals and human beings means uh, we plant eating uh, human being uh, animal means human being and uh, any animal also they are eating plants. So, they are also this uh, ratio is maintained okay. when the plant or animal dies now the thing is starting when it, the plant dies wood is coming from a plant right. So, when the plant dies the steady steady state this is the steady state is disturbed since fresh intake of carbon dioxide stops. When a plant dies then it is not taking any more the carbon dioxide what is there stored that is stored it is it is it dies. So, no more carbon dioxide is taken up then what will happen then then radiocarbon dating continued. So, then the 14 carbon continues to decay and 14 carbon is to 12 carbon that is the ratio drops because this is then start decaying this is not decaying this is decaying. So, the ratio is changing now okay, it is no more that 10 to the minus 12 is to 1 now it is changing. So, after certain years only a fraction of it is left C 14 is decaying. So, if you allow it to to remain for long time then after certain period of time you will see that the ratio drops okay. and then how much if you then uh, 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 means measure the ratio uh, present what is the at present what is the ratio you know the earlier one starting one you know the ratio, but at present if you can measure uh, by some way uh, the ratio then you can easily tell that how much time has gone ok. That is the that is the theory that is the means uh, principle behind it radiocarbon dating ok and this you know this um, Libby and his co-workers could test many archaeological samples and could trace taste 10,000 years of history. They have examined many many samples and uh, huge amount of work they have done ok. New it is a new principle right and then uh, the Nobel prize in 1960 was given to Libby ok. Now, let us do one problem then you will understand what is the problem a sample of wood has been found to contain C 14 is to C 12 that is 0.8 times as that in living plant. Living pla in living plant how much was there now it is 0.8 times of that ok. What is the approximate time elapsed since the plant died? TRP is 5760 years ok. So, uh, lambda you can find out 0.693 by T half that is the lambda this is the lambda decay constant. Now, ln n 0 by n lambda t ok n 0 by n if in the beginning it is n 1 then now it is how much 0.8 times as that of the initial. So, point, uh, 1 by 0.8 is equal to lambda t. So, how much is the t this much years. So, by doing simple experiment you can find out the the age of the wood ok. It is called radiocarbon dating. Now, uh, we have uh, we have seen uh, properties of uh, this um, radioactive uh, elements ok and we have seen the properties of the radiations alpha particles, beta particles, gamma 
uh, rays all those things. So, what are the uses of this? There are many uses actually. You, you know that uh, radioactivity when the properties and all those things the on health also it is not known that time in Madame Curie's time Madame Curie uh, died out of cancer. Because radioactivity you know if you um, if you work under this type of uh, conditions then uh, you will get cancer. Okay. So, uh, it is required it is used for treatment of cancer, but it can produce also cancer okay. that is why uh, Madame Curie died out of cancer that time it was not known that it can cause cancer. Now, what are the different uses of nuclear radiations here you see that food if you uh, keep the food for long period of time some uh, for some time it will become stale it will give bad smell. Okay. So, to increase the shelf life of food uh, or water uh, this type of uh, gamma radiations are used to kill the bacteria. Why the food becomes stale because of the formation of growth of bacteria right. You will uh, learn more uh, during the environmental microbiology classes, but uh, we all know this thing that um, uh, the, the um, uh, food becomes uh, um, stale because of the uh, microorganisms. So, if you can kill the microorganisms uh, by some way then it will remain for long time. Now, gamma rays can be used to kill the bacteria and to increase the shelf life. Synthesis. Uh, this is the application, okay. but uh, milk you know uh, pasteurization that is not done by that is some other procedure that is used, okay. uh, but uh, this is used for food uh, or sometimes for water. Now, synthesis of gamaxin, okay. gamaxin you know gamaxin we are using uh, as pesticide or insecticide gamaxin we are using this is nothing but uh, hexachlorobenzene uh, hexachlorobenzene you know benzene okay benzene um, c6h6 but then uh, there are double bonds three double bonds are there so if you can add chlorine if you um, remove the double bonds and you uh, introduce six chlorine atoms in the benzene ring uh, then it will become gamaxin and it is called hexachlorobenzene BHC also it is called benzene hexachloride. So, this type of material um, can be prepared can be synthesized from benzene and chlorine by gamma ray irradiation. Uh, it is sometimes it is done by UV light also, but gamma rays also can uh, can do the same way. So, um, gamaxin can be uh, produced. So, this is an application. Okay. Now, formation of ethyl bromide, you know ethyl bromide um, C2H5Br, you can uh, uh, produce this from uh, e ethane and HBr. So, if you take a mixture of ethane and HBr, it is a some type of addition reaction, there is a double bond. So, in the double bond that HBr is added up to, to form this one. So, how it is done you take mixture and then you uh, irradiate it with gamma rays okay. then uh, this uh, uh, ethyl bromide will be formed. There are many other reactions I, uh, I have picked up only few. Now, these are some of the uses some, uh, some uses of isotopes this is this is not radio isotope the um, application is uh, uh, this uh, application of isotope. Okay. Now, this is a very important reaction you know this is the photosynthesis photosynthesis here 6 CO 2 plus 6 water gives C 6 H 12 O 6 1 molecule the glucose and then 6 oxygen 6 molecules of oxygen. Now, for this um, one question may come to your mind okay. oxygen is produced but this oxygen is coming from carbon dioxide or it is coming from water. Okay. This is very important question now oxygen uh, that produced oxygen is coming this oxygen is this oxygen or this oxygen. So, mechanism actually it is a mechanism to study the reaction mechanism. Uh, 
this for for this work means to know the mechanism Nobel prize to Calvin and co-workers was given 1961 Nobel prize was given. It can be done by isotopic leveling, isotopic leveling means this isotope of oxygen, oxygen is actually 16, 8, but it is 18, 8. So, it is an isotope of oxygen. Now, if you um, label say for example, this oxygen you take water with uh, this oxygen O 18 okay. and then you allow the reaction to go on then if you see that this oxygen contains the O 18 then you will understand that this oxygen is coming from here. Okay. So, and if you see that there is no O 18 even if you use this water uh, labeled with O 18 then you will understand that this oxygen is coming from here. So, this experiment is called isotopic labeling, isotopic labeling ok um, interesting ex, uh, means uh, experiment. Now, here another you have already learned this esterification and ester hydrolysis ok this is the esterification uh, from a carboxylic acid R C O O H and uh, some alcohol R dash O H you are preparing the ester R C O O R dash plus water ok. Now, uh, question is with in the water this O H this O H or this O H. So, this also can be done by isotopic labeling. So, for example, you label this oxygen as O 18 and then you you find out this water that is produced water whether it contains the O 18 or not. If you see that this contains O 18 then this O H is forming the water. But if you see that there is no 18, then this is coming here. Okay. So, but uh, actually, what is the mechanism here? Depending on the, both can happen. This O H can be this O H or it can be this O H. Both are possible depending on the carboxylic acid. This combination, carboxylic acid and alcohol. Um, it is not always true that this O H is coming from here it may come from here also depending on what acid you are taking and what alcohol you are taking. Okay. But this method is called isotopic labeling, here it is not radio isotope, but it is isotope. Okay. Now, analytical chemistry also uh, you can use uh, this um, here it is radio, radio isotope okay. iodine, iodine 131. So, silver ion determination estimation you know silver I have told you in my previous modules that silver plus can be precipitated as silver chloride if you add some sodium chloride say for example, then it will be precipitated as silver chloride and you can estimate it um, how much silver is present, but um, all silver plus is not uh, is not precipitated actually. So, then what you should do to know accurately more accurately you can do something like you can use this uh, to know in microgram level actually by doing silver chloride you can go up to milligram uh, level determination, but here it is you can do by microgram level determin uh, uh, microgram level determination. How say for example, you can use um, Ki say for example, potassium iodide potassium iodide, but labeled with iodine 131 ok, iodine 131. Now, iodine 131 you can um, add here to form the silver iodide and that silver iodide you can um, take out. Um, uh, of course, there you have to add some uh, ferric ions to form the ferrous or ferric ions to form the hydroxide of it. So, that it can be trapped easily as the precipitate and then you can estimate. Okay. If you estimate that then you can uh, easily and uh, because you have used this iodine 131. So, you can easily 
uh, find out uh, how much silver was there means it is a better method uh, in terms of uh, uh, means um, uh, level of detection or level of estimation means you can go uh, uh, lower level of detection or determination. So, that is in analytical chemistry. Now, radio chromatography, chromatography you all know chromatography is a method to separate um, things like some molecules it can be molecules it can be ions okay, to, uh, to separate it and then after separation there should be some detection um, uh, detection uh, unit so that you can detect it, but here it is radio chromatography it is also chromatography, but then uh, um, that uh, radioactivity is applied ok. How separation of a number of elements from their mixtures and subsequent identification by the radioactivity that is why it is called radio chromatography. These Seaborg and co-workers they have used this technique to, um, to separate the trans uranium elements, trans uranium elements separation they have used this technique. So, what is there uh, in a nutshell you can tell that separation of a number of elements by chromatography first chromatographic technique and then when it is eluted you know. Uh, so, in the chromatography what we do we first adsorb it uh, in some adsorbing column and then we elute it with solvents uh, and uh, the things uh, which is present in the mixture they come out one by one ok and then we detect it and determine it. So, here when they are eluted by some something uh, uh, you can use many things for elution after that uh, identification of the elements by the radioactivity is done and a plot of activity against volume of eluent. So, in the x axis you plot the volume of eluent and you will get sharp peaks. Uh, for the trans uranium element. So, each element will give one peak sharp peak that way you will know which what is this and uh, in which element it is coming ok. So, it is basically separation as well as identification ok. Uh, complicated not complicated means mechanism is same, but uh, in the uh, normal chromatography we either use some UV visible um, method or other methods, but here it is radioactivity ok. Radioactivity property is used. Now, this is also another type of uh, another application. Now, industrial use uh, what is the industrial use you know thickness of sheets moving on a conveyor belt you have seen conveyor belt in the airports and uh, many places um, shopping malls. So, conveyor belt um, uh, thickness of the sheets it is uh, decayed after some time it goes uh, means thickness goes uh, uh, thickness becomes less. So, to know this what it is done is measured by placing thickness of the sheets moving on a conveyor belt is measured thickness is measured by placing this is strontium 90 this is beta emitter it is radioactive ok it, it gives beta rays. Okay, under the belt and measuring the activity using a detector. So, there is some instrument by which you can see the you can detect the radioactivity ok um, and then you will know the thickness. So, that is the concept. Now, medicinal use uh, radioactive iodine 131 for thyroid gland disorder. So, some sodium iodide uh, say for example, um, is pushed and then it goes to the thyroid gland and there uh, it is uh, radioactive. So, it uh, uh, means um, it uh, cures the disorder ok. Radioactive iodine is a beta emitter the radiation destroys the malignant cells without affecting the normal cells. It will preferentially it will go to the thyroid gland ok iodine na. So, it will go to the thyroid gland and then there it will um, because it is radioactive. So, it will give out the beta rays and then the malignant cells will be killed, but normal cells will not be killed. Now, gamma ray from cobalt 60 uh, cobalt 60 is a gamma ray emitter. So, gamma rays coming out it can be used for cancer treatment. 
So, gamma rays are used for cancer treatment this is also um, application. Now, this is sodium chloride solution labeled with sodium 24 it is also beta ray emitter. Okay, so, what it is done how, why it is used to identify any abnormality in circulation of blood circulation of blood whether there is some abnormality in the circulation of blood it can be identified how uh, how sodium chloride solution where the sodium 24 is applied uh, so uh, which is radioactivity radioactive so that is injected in the veins okay after that if the, if the system is normal then you should see the activity within uh, one hour uh, you can see the activity in your feet okay in the feet but if there is some abnormality it will take longer time to to identify to recognize the activity in your feet ok. So, that way you will understand ok uh, this is normal your blood circulation is normal or it is uh, uh, or, or it is uh, uh, some abnormality is there. So, th that is the medicine the all those things are medicinal use. So, there are lot of use for those types of radiations ok. So, this is some uses of isotopes some radiation and radioactive isotopes also we have shown. So, radioactivity has lot of applications. Now, measurement you can tell me how the radioactivity is measured radioactivity we cannot see it right. So, how we can measure it how we will know that this this uh, this is radioactive ok. So, um, there are many methods how radioactivity is measured based on the following properties they have some property you have seen the alpha ray have some property beta ray has some property gamma also some property. So, based on those properties the measurements can be done one property is what radioactivity um, radioactive radiations can affect photographic plates that we have already seen in the discovery you know that uh, exposed the photographic plates were exposed ok by the radiations. So, by using this uh, you can know that ok in fact they also um, uh, speculated from the in the same way that ok there is something in the bottle that is potassium uranyl sulphate that is giving something radiations that is exposing the photographic plate um, ok. But now why it is happening because you know now we are doing all the um, photography that classical photography is gone now. Now, we are all digital ok, uh, but what is the mechanism this is very nice chemistry is there in the classical photography what is there in the photographic film or photographic plate that is nothing but silver bromide. And when the light is coming in the silver bromide it is producing silver uh, 0 silver 0 um, means um, G silver 0 oxidation state silver 0 and that will produce spots black spots that will see the producing the latent image black dots it will produce it is a very nice science um, chemistry actually. Um, but um, uh, this way also when the light is passing uh, means radioactive rays are pa passing the some rays are passing there and then uh, photographic plates is are exposed ok. And you cannot stop it by putting any uh, aluminum foil or by putting any black paper or by putting some wood nothing will uh, block this uh, rays ok. That, that thing happened there with Becquerel first time. The another, uh, another property of uh, radioactive radiation is that it can ionize the gas it can ionize the gas. So, you, you will see I will show you gold dip electroscope and Geiger Muller counter these two are the uh, instruments that by which you can detect or measure the radioactivity that I will show you later. Um, another property is radioactive radiations can produce luminescence in substances such as zinc sulphide. Uh, this property is most prominent with alpha rays ok it produces bright flash and it can be seen in the dark room with a telescope ok. The, uh, the counted flashes provide the measure of the radiation. So, uh, there is the um, screen uh, uh, where zinc sulphide is there then uh, when these types of rays are uh, um, uh, uh, coming then they will produce on the screen they will produce flash ok bright flash 
uh, and if you make the room dark then you can see the flash ok and uh, these are nothing but the radioactive radiations. So, this is a property ok and um, by which how many flashes are coming by which uh, by that you can tell that ok how many radiations how many particles are coming like this. So, this is one method another method is there this is the radioactive radiation that I will show you the the things ok. Gold leaf electroscope this is very old thing Becquerel and, uh, um, uh, and Madame Curie they have used this thing actually uh, the you know these are the uh, thin foils of gold and this is the um, uh, rod ok this is insulated ok and there is some air also, but here it is a plate metal this is metal rod ok metal rod and this is the uh, some plate ok. If you uh, keep some charge here then uh, charge will go here and then these um, two plates the um, that um, leaves they are called leaves gold actually made of gold fine very fine leaves are there these leaves because the charge is similar. So, they will repel each other ok and they will go like this, but um, if you uh, bring some uh, radioactive element here and they will produce some uh, radiations and then the air they will ionize the air ok. When the uh, air will be ionized, so uh, this one will discharge their charge there in the um, ionized air and then they will come like this they will uh, they will not repel anymore they will come like this. So, this is the um, by this way they will know that ok radioactivity is coming from the element ok. Um, so, this is uh, this is old type, but here it is the Geiger Muller counter Ge Geiger Muller tube or Geiger Muller counter you can use here argon gas is there and there is the this is a um, this is a um, uh, tube ok metal tube actually and th this is uh, connected this is the um, uh, negative electrode and this is insulated and this is a uh, wire uh, metal wire this is the positive ok this is uh, uh, this is joined and the high voltage is passed. Now, when the um, beta rays are coming say for example, then here there is the argon gas ok argon gas is there. So, it will ionize the gas and it will produce uh, positive uh, argons uh, and then um, electrons and positive uh, argon gas then these electrons will be discharged here because it is uh, uh, electrons will be discharged here and positive argons will be discharged here. Then you will see the some sound you will listen to some sounds ok. So, it will be discharged so you will sound see some sound. So, kit 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 like this. So, you will um, from there you will know how much uh, radioactivity is there. A portable type you can uh, take it from here to there and you can put it somewhere to know whether it is there is some um, some radioactivity in some material or not handy things and um, you can count also. So, these are the two things there are other things also, but uh, these are the two things that you can uh, use for measurement and detection of radioactivity. Now, so radioactivity uh, uh, is very important now uh, it has many applications and uh, very interesting uh, um, properties uh, although you have to be very careful uh, when you are uh, using this type of radioactive elements you have to be very careful because they can uh, create cancer they can uh, they are health uh, they produce health hazard also. So, that is why you have to be very careful there are some special dresses also special goggles also um, special equipment uh, special arrangement also uh, to protect us from this type of radioactive uh, uh, radiations ok. These same three books I can refer for this uh, this chapter and in this lecture uh, we have discussed about the radiocarbon dating very interesting radiocarbon dating some applications of radioactive radiations and isotopes um, measurements of radioactivity how we can do that is also uh, described uh, thank you thank you very much.